We are at Magic Central with the owner, Ricky Boone, in Asheville, North Carolina. Welcome to the show, Ricky. Thank you. Thank you very much, as Elvis would say. So tell us, how did you get involved in magic as a youth? Here in Asheville, we found out, my family found out there was a school for special needs people in Asheville, so we moved to Asheville, and... Within a year or so, we got a new principal. He got off of a Harley Davidson wearing a black leather jacket. Comes up and starts talking to the kids. Says, let me show you something. He showed us some magic. Then he became the principal of the school. And he, I was visiting the principal's office almost a daily. We made it think that we made all of the students think that I was in trouble all the time. But he would give me in his office and show me tricks how to do them, and he just started from there. So that's fantastic. So from a very young age, you were exposed to magic, and then your love for magic nurtured you into making a career of it. Tell us how that happened. Well, I've always picked out some of the most expensive hobbies, photography and magic, and I found out that I had to make a career out of both of them just to be able to afford to do them. So I've been a photographer, I've been a magician, I'm still a magician, motivational speaker, and uh, yes, I am in a wheelchair. It's hard to tell on the radio, but I'm in uh, in a wheelchair. So tell us about what you've done in the world of magic and the impact that you've made. I have created a lot of tricks. There's a lot of things that I see that I want to do, but because of my disability... Uh, I can't do them the way they're created, so I redesign the effects. And I blow the minds of some magicians that are out there. And a lot of magicians, if you say my name in the magic world, they have said that I'm an inspiration because I inspire them because they say, if Ricky can do it, I can do it. So you just showed us the magic trick that you developed with a stick. Now, Kavora, tell us about that. Well, he has this uh, small stick that looks like it's made of wood, and he runs it through a hand, and then a diamond appears. And then you can go run it through his hand again, and it's got two diamonds, and then again, and it's got three diamonds. And then he can run his finger across it, and, and then two of the diamonds disappeared. <laughs> it, it's It's a great trick. Yeah, we love it. And you developed that, is that correct? Yes, sir. About 20, 25 years ago, it's called Easy as One, Two, Three. I'm out of stock on this, but I'm having more made right now. And uh, they'll be back in at Magic Central. So give us an idea of some of the luminaries that you've met over the years in the field of magic. I met David Copperfield before he was a big name. I was able to sit and talk with him for hours. Uh, then I followed him around and went to some of his shows. And uh, I've met Copperfield. I've, I've been on stage with some of the biggest names. Uh, uh, I've been on stage with uh, Michael Amar. I've been on stage with Jim McBride. I've uh, been on stage with uh, Joe Scott Berry, uh, Harry Anderson, the guy from Night Court. We used to, we were best buds until he passed away. He, I mean, that's the way my life is. My life has been orchestrated from the beginning. He was my idol. I liked Harry Anderson. He did comedy. He did magic. And we were doing shows. We had a magic club. We were doing shows and... Somebody came backstage one night and said, you're not going to believe who's in the audience. I said, who? They said, Harry Anderson is out there. And I'm like, well, crap. I said, I was I was planning on just doing something stupid tonight. And uh, everybody starts changing what they were doing. I said, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. He might like it. And he came up to me after the show, and he thought it was hilarious. He thought it was wonderful. He had moved to Asheville. We hung out together. He was in the store a lot. We worked on on creations together. 
He wrote about me in his books and magazine articles. We went to magic conventions together. And it was, I mean, how many people get to meet their idol? Not only meet their idol, but become friends with their idol. It's amazing. My life is magical. It really is. Now, you inspired us by telling us how you're a motivational speaker. Could you give us some insight on that and what exactly you do and how you motivate others? Well, I'll tell you, my life is it's just weird. I had, a, had to have brain surgery about 25 years ago. I wasn't supposed to survive. Not only did I survive the surgery, they cracked it in my skull to fix the worst thing in the world. And from the MRI, it changed to the easiest thing in the world for them to fix. I was back in the store in a week. Then uh, about a year after that, I had a heart attack while performing on stage in front of 500 people. I don't remember the show, but people in the audience said that it was one of the funniest shows I ever did. I wasn't supposed to survive that. The ejection fraction of my heart was uh, 8, and it's supposed to be 50 percent. And the doctor said, you're going to die, there's nothing we can do. And I stayed in the hospital for about a week before they realized I wasn't going to die, and then I stayed another week or two getting over it. And a lot of people say that I'm an inspiration just from the things that I have encountered and I have overcome. It tries to, I guess it helps people see that they can overcome whatever their problem is. And everybody has problems. Everybody. The people that are walking around, if you look at them, you wouldn't know that they have a problem in the world. But they've got I mean, they've got emotional problems, they've got physical problems, they've got, they've got addiction problems. I mean, I, I, I feel like that I really don't fit in. I don't fit in in the, in the magic world. I don't fit in the handicapped world because I've done more than most handicapped people. I'm a misfit. And I look for other misfits because I have found that the misfits are the best people in the world. Because they have a heart and a soul that you have to get to know, but you'll finally find it. And I use magic. I do a, I do a show, but everything that I do has to do about putting your life back together. How your life will mess up, and then you can put it back together. And I just talk about my life while I'm doing that. And they tell me that inspires a lot of people. Well, there's no doubt about it. As we're browsing your shop, we see your vivacious personality, and we're impressed. Tell us about how you operate this store. Well, if you look over there in the front, there's all kind of awards, too. There's a real Emmy Award. There was a, a story about my life that won two Emmy Awards. And what uh, was that called? Uh, and that's on, you can find it on YouTube. It's called Magic Man. And it's about four minutes long, and uh, it's very well done. The local TV station did it on the, the news, and uh, then they went and they won two Emmy, two Emmy Awards for their uh, uh, presenting that story. And there are other awards. There's a Lifetime Achievement Award over there. There's also awards where I just compete with other magicians from around the world, and I've one second, third, and first place. And I've, I've been very blessed. I've appeared on all four networks on TV. And I've, my face is on the cover of a magic magazine. Uh, then just this month, October, there was another really nice article about, about me in another magic magazine that I was very honored to be in. Well, we're looking at your wall of fame, and it's absolutely impressive to see the, the things that you're on the cover of and your achievements that were recognized. Obviously, there's achievements of yours that, that 
are not, but to see things on, on this level, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, the store is amazing and everything, like, like you've got books, and, and you mentioned uh, Harry Anderson. You've got his book over there, Wise Guy, and a lot of other posters and, and other magicians. Um, th- this is a very neat store. And you have this giant backdrop that says Lady Vanthea's Miracle Elixir. Can you tell us about this curiosity? That actually appeared on Saturday Night Live. Harry Anderson did a medicine show, and that was on the back of a wagon. He stepped out of the wagon and uh, did his medicine show. There's a stamp on the back, on the back side of this that proves that it was created by the the uh, uh, people at Saturday Night Live. So, I mean, this is, it's almost a museum as well as a store. Is that by design, or is it just because after a while you started accumulating all these amazing things? Well, it's fascinating because you're not the only one that's told me, wow, this is more like a magic museum than a store. And it is. And uh, so it just happened. It just happened over the years. I've been here since uh, 93. No, 95. I'm sorry, 95. So I've collected a lot of stuff over the years. Absolutely incredible. Well, we recommend that our listeners stop by this place. We're going to put the address in our show notes as well as the website. But Asheville, North Carolina. Check it out, Magic Central. Any closing words? Yeah, you can also find me on Facebook. Send me a friend's request on Facebook. Ricky, R-I-C-K-Y, Boone, B-O-O-N-E. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ricky. It's, It's an incredible experience coming to Magic Central. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long and may the force be with you. Nanu Nanu. Nanu, nanu.